Okay, good morning, welcome back to Stiffles TV and thank you for joining the Average Golfer for quite a uh, exciting video, I think, this one because it is not, first of all, let's clear, it's not 2019, which is when I next expected to be doing a review on a Titleist driver. It's 2018 and I say that because as you Titleist fans will know, we're kind of they've always had this two-year cycle, 915, 917, expected the next release of drivers to be in 2019, but that's not the case. And the TS2 and 3 are the clubs that we will be looking at today. Let's have a quick look before we go any further at this. Let's get a bit of a close-up. We'll talk about what I think of the looks in a minute, but that's the TS3, at least, anyway. Um, so yeah, first of all, I think the question I'm asking is why is the TS3 being released? Why has there been a break in the cycle? What is the logic in that from Titleist perspectives? We're soon gonna find out. Um, first of all, let's talk about what is in the TS2 and the TS3 in terms of how they differ, how they're aimed at different, perhaps different golfers. And the way I have been explained, first of all, let me tell you, I met up with um, Fraser from Titleist is a product specialist. We spent an hour or so, first and foremost, and this is mega, mega important, is that I got fitted for this driver. Um, and there was huge variations in terms of performance from where we started, in terms of shafting, in terms of setup, in terms of weighting, in the TS3 in particular, in terms of where we started and where we ended up. So I think that's a key message with this driver. As it, all, as it is with all drivers, you have to get custom fit. So, TS2 very much aimed i would think perhaps in its setup the most forgiving out the two drivers cg well and truly as far back as possible all the weight stripped back as with every driver at the moment that's all they're trying to do in these kind of things and all the aim is on forgiveness but not forgiving on ball speeds and overall distance and performance that's what ts2 does ts3 so that's for somebody maybe who's got a bit of a variable strike pattern it's in and around all over the club face and I think that was the camp that I certainly thought that I would fit into when we first sat down. We then look at the TS3 and the TS3 is again both 460 heads on these by the way. The TS3 slightly different in the um, I think in where it's aimed at. They might want to say that it's aimed at different markets but somebody who's got a more consistent strike pattern and not necessarily out of the middle either because of the way in which the weighting system works and how we're allowed to move the weighting round. Um, for me, for example, what we ended up doing was a lot of my strike pattern came out centre to toe area and we ended up moving the weight more to the toe area, placing that CG more directly behind my consistent strike pattern, even though it not being out of the centre. And again, it made mass differences in terms of the overall performance. And that was nice to see. And we'll see that in the numbers again shortly. But before we go any further, I think what we've got to do is talk about, as we always do, is about looks on these golf clubs. So here's a few images of the TS3 alongside me now. And I think you've got to draw parallels to the 917 and make reference back to the 917s. And I think one of the major things here is how much different the TS3 looks from the 917. Because the 917 in effect looked very, very similar to me to the 915. And they kept in very much a repeated pattern of each of those releases. Whereas the TS3 is very much a break from the norm from Titleist. And I've got to say a real change on a positive note as well. It's a far cleaner looking club, it's less complicated. In my eyes, it's a more modern looking golf club and it's been really stripped back. And I think that's the first major box that this club ticks from Titleist. And obviously that's something they've worked hard on. We then look at how this sits behind the ball. And once again, they've gone for the traditional gloss black finish, which again is something I am much more comfortable with on the eye, the gray, and the sort of elongated shape, I think it was of the D2 in particular last time around on the 917 race, didn't suit my eye at all. I wasn't keen, and in all honesty, I wasn't a great lover of the 917 range full stop and performance wise, I've always struggled to get any great numbers out of tightless drivers in all honesty. So this is a real interesting one for me, but once again, looking from the top of the ball, which is the majority of positions that you're gonna see, I forget what it looks like underneath. It looks really spot on neat and tidy, no messing round, and again, ticks a box. Other big move for me, notable move with this range, is the shaft options that are being offered by Titleist. They've always been particularly associated with Diamana shafts for many, many years. And I think what they've done here again, is they've offered some stock options that are even flow. Um, we've got the 10 size shafts, and we've got the hazardous smoke 
uh, as standard options which again is much more in line with what the other manufacturers are offering and I think that again is a very very positive move from what Titleist have, uh, have done. So my setup what did I end up with well like I said for me it is key to make sure you get custom fit with any driver and I think that's certainly the case with the Titleist as well uh, lots of variations in terms of setup in the Titleist driver and for me where we started from and ended up was quite differently but I'll throw up the spec in terms of the shaft that I ended up using in both of these two drivers when I hit finally got hit in some golf balls right so I ended up with a 10 side blue 55 gram stiff standard length 9.5 degrees aloft um, standard weight position obviously in the um, in the in the T2 TS2 that is and we stuck the weight position um, in the toe area in the TS3 so that's enough about how it looks like I haven't got interestingly enough I've got no great tech spec to relay in terms of what tight list are claiming because they kept this very much under wraps so I've only got what I've had from discussions with Fraser uh, from Titleist but I've got nothing in front of me to re relay back in terms of what Titleist are saying so it's very much a first look and I suppose what they say and what it actually does is the more key thing and that's what we're going to find out shortly so I got it in some golf balls and quite a lot to be fair of golf balls with both clubs I spent a lot of time on the TS3 because what I found out for me very very quickly is that at my performance was far greater with the TS3 than the TS2 and that was unexpected I fully expected to be more in the camp of the TS2 from the descriptions that were given of the two clubs and that wasn't the case and it's quite a big difference on a number of levels. In terms of the sound and feel of these clubs I think there is a difference between the two and again I was drawn towards the TS3 sound and feel. Um, I'd like to get out there on the course because once again I think the acoustics inside of a driving range bay are quite different than when you tee it up outside in the wide space on a fairway but for me both far better sound and feel than the 917 so there's straight away for me this is a massive leap forward from the uh, 917 range it really is on a number of levels and we haven't even talked about performance yet and that's where we'll get to so like I said let's start off with the numbers that I achieved first of all on the TS2 and I'll throw these up on screen for you now. Right, so like I said, I use the 10 size shaft in both of these. Uh, club head speed, 95 mile an hour, 96 mile an hour almost, 146 ball speed, 2.9 spin, which was uh, a little bit high, uh, average 227 carry, uh, 252 overall, and launching fairly low still at 9.8. Now I think the first thing to note for me with the TS2, like I said, is that it just, I just didn't quite get on with it. Um, maybe again more and more time spent in tweaking this driver to get more performance out of it i don't know i found it even though it was supposed to my launch angle at 9.8 i was expecting the ball again to be uh, much more of a kind of high launching driver uh, again didn't really do that it did spin high it just didn't produce a numbers wise in and around sort of that 230 carry is okay without being great and I'm back to where I was really with the 917 in terms of numbers so I quickly moved away from that and went on to the TS3 did spend the time in terms of setup in terms of the weight in particular because the strike pattern like I said was certainly sort of um, center to toe area and moving the weight behind that area made a big difference to my performance which sometimes you know we question how much difference it makes in terms of these weighting options but it certainly did make a difference um, from my performance considerably I'll throw the numbers now on the TS3 and they're going to come up in two batches because I hit quite a number of shots um, so the first batch I think is numbers 1 to 10 um, where are we at now shot number 5 was a 245 carry almost 246 carry uh, 266 almost 267 overall and then shot number 2 was 240 carry 266 uh, shot number nine two three four two sixty two carry so you can see there pretty impressive numbers um, but if I then show you straight into shots 11 to 18 we've got some averages to work with now um, so 96.9 so 97 slightly quicker um, club head speed on this one ball speed 148.8 so we're starting to see some differences now still spinning quite high really 2824 you'd probably look to achieve uh, want a better number and again that's about spending time getting custom fit uh, and probably like to see that number drop a little um, but we got an overall carrier 236.2 um, 
and a 260 overall 10.2 launch. Now they're all, as we know, dry ball data. They great to see. It's a great way of measuring performance. And I think that putting them to one side for a minute, I'll just tell you what I've seen out there in terms of the driving ranges of performance. For me, big difference between the two. Really enjoyed the performance of the TS3. TS2, uh, okay, didn't perform that great for me. And once again, I think that's, I keep going on about it. It's the importance of the custom fit. Um, I love the feel out of the TS3 and those numbers in and around that sort of 240 carry to 260, 265 rollout getting that spin down a little is as good as I can hit to be honest with you. it's as good as anything that I've hit um, in the last 12 months or so um, but I think my overall assessment would be this it's as good as anything I've hit over the last 12 months or so not better than and I think that's the big key for me I think that I mentioned at the beginning of this video why has this product been released uh, out of sort of cycle and I think it's because Titleist are playing catch up with this um, they fell behind in terms of performance for me in the uh, driver and fairway market and I think what this does is it puts them very much back in the game. Titleist is now these two products are very much an option when you walk in and looking at the major brands that you would normally consider I think now this is back in there as being an option whereas for me the 917 just wasn't an option it fell behind so when we talk about has performance changed or not changed for me, the reason Titleist have brought this out is because performance has changed in other drivers. It has moved on a little bit, certainly in terms of MOI, in terms of forgiveness and ball speeds across the club face. And I think that's what they've managed to achieve now. But they've only achieved it in terms of catching up. I don't think they've moved any, any, any way. They haven't moved forward with this in terms of gaining any advantage, but they've now put themselves back into a position where they become an option and they're back up there with what I consider to be the main players in terms of driver sales at the moment. So overall, really impressive product, but only catching up with what's already out there. And it'd be interesting to see where this goes to next and how TS2 and TS3 evolve, what happens in terms of 919, Interesting stuff from Titleist. As you'd expect, quality, quality build, great performance. Hope you enjoyed the review from the perspective of the average golfer. I'll do some head-to-head -head videos on this one in the coming months and maybe maybe my opinion will change. Who knows? Be interesting to see, like I said, when we stick it up against some of those drivers I've been talking about and uh, we shall see. Anyway, if you like this video, then please hit the like button. If you don't subscribe already, then please do so. And uh, that's me pretty much done. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.